This is a device that was used in military radar during World War II. Now we can find it hiding in our microwave oven, which serves in several culinary processes. But how can military applications also be used in cooking food? Hello, I am Dean, the creator of the 3D Casual Learning Channel. In this video, we will learn how does microwave oven works and see what is inside the remarkable technology. Microwave has made our life easier and more convenient, which has become an essential kitchen appliance. Cooking and reheating food has changed the way it works. Before the invention of the microwave, hot meal preparation involved heating, steaming, roasting, or slowly cooking food in an oven or on a stovetop. Modern kitchens are now incomplete without a microwave, since they can quickly and easily cook, reheat, or even crisp food in a couple of minutes. How did it begin? During World War II, the development of cavity magnetrons intensified. It used to produce relatively short wavelengths for radar usage. In 1945, Percy Spencer discovered the heating effect of a high-power microwave beam by accident. He was working for Raytheon at the time and observed that microwaves from the radar set he was working on began to melt a candy bar he carried in his pocket. He later investigated the potential of the microwave to cook food using electromagnetic fields. He found that by concentrating microwave radiation from a magnetron into food inside a metal cage, the temperature rises quickly. Two years later, the first microwave oven was introduced commercially, called Radaranch. The size is almost 1.8 meters in length and weighs 340 kilograms, which cost more than $2,000. Today, a microwave oven can be used for multiple functions of cooking such as preheating, defrosting, boiling, steaming, and simmering. Compared to a conventional oven which cooks food from the outside, a microwave oven cooks food simultaneously throughout the food using energy from the magnetron that directly penetrates the food. How does it achieve this? It all starts with electromagnetic waves. Electromagnetic waves consist of electric and magnetic fields. When they both come into contact, electromagnetic waves are produced. Hence, they are known as electromagnetic waves. These fields are perpendicular to one another and oscillate at 2.45 billion times per second. But in this video, we only focus on electrical field since it uses for heating up the food. Microwave is a type of non-ionizing electromagnetic wave. It has a frequency ranging from 300 megahertz to 300 gigahertz and wavelengths of 1 meter to 1 millimeter. It is located between radio waves and infrared light in the electromagnetic spectrum. What it does to our food is truly amazing. Most of our food has water molecules. It contains one oxygen atom, and two hydrogen atoms stick together at an angle of 104.5 degrees. It has a slight negative charge in the region of the oxygen atom, and a slight positive charge near the hydrogen atoms. Therefore, water is a polar molecule. When we apply an electrical field, water molecules are forced to align with the field orientation. 
Remember that our electromagnetic waves are oscillating. When they pass through food, water molecules are forced to swing back and forth along with the electrical field. This rapid movement causes them to vibrate and smash each other. The friction between molecules generates heat and allows food to be cooked more evenly from the inside out. Now we understand that electromagnetic radiation is absorbed by food. The vibration of water molecules generates heat that spreads throughout the food. But how can we produce and contain such radiation safely? Well, the real engineering of a microwave oven appears in the creation of a magnetron. The magnetron is a vacuum tube that converts electrical energy into high-power microwaves. Since the World War II era, the magnetron has transformed into a modern device, but its working principle remains the same. However, microwave radiation has the potential to heat body tissues in the same way it cooks food. High levels of exposure might result in skin burns or cataracts, so it needs to be contained inside a cage for safe use. If we place a metal plate in front of the magnetron, it will reflect the microwave. When we place a second metal plate on the other side, it will once again reflect the microwave. As a result, we get an alternating back and forth reflection of the microwave trapped within the plates. When we install a close gauge, we can contain the microwave's energy inside the cage. At the same time, the efficiency of the microwave also has increased. At this point, it's not yet enough to heat food. What it needs is to reach an optimum condition, called the resonance cavity. To understand the resonance cavity, let's analyze a microwave that comes out of a magnetron. A microwave that exits from magnetron is moving forward. If we focus on any spot, we can see it maneuvering along at constant speed. The wave moves from one location to another. Because of this characteristic, we call it progressive wave. But what we want to achieve is stationary wave since it has a maximum intensity. So, we need to convert a progressive wave to a stationary wave. Remember that we put metal plates between the microwave before. Without specific distance of reflector, the wave travels back and forth out of control and produces infinite waves. If we adjust the distance between the reflectors, the reflected wave will superpose each other. Notice that the reflector is exactly on the intersection of the two waves. The next wave will be on top of the first wave and bounce back on top of the second wave. This repetitive process will generate only two waves oscillating on specific amplitude. Let's see how it happens. When the first wave moves to the left, it will bounce back to the right by the reflector. Now let's separate it so that we can see clearly. Both waves travel at the same amplitude and frequency but in opposite direction. If we add it together, the result will be the sum of both amplitudes, meaning the amplitude will be double. This phenomenon is known as the stationary wave and will be used as the final wave for food heating. Although stationary wave is the most efficient, it has a cold spot known as nodes. In contrast, the hot spot is known as anti-nodes. An easy way to prove it is by heating a slice of cheese inside the oven. We can see the hot and cold spots that describe the food cooked unevenly. To overcome the limitation, a spinning tray is needed to distribute heat evenly throughout the food. In a typical microwave oven, the length of the cavity is always determined by integer times half of lambda. It can be calculated using a simple wavelength formula. Wavelength is usually denoted by the Greek letter lambda. 
It is equal to the phase speed of a wave train in a medium divided by its frequency. Let's see the stationary wave again. Wavelength is measured from crest to crest, or from trough to trough, in longitudinal waves. We know that phase speed is equal to the speed of light. Meanwhile, a typical microwave oven always uses 2.45 GHz of frequency. Therefore, the wavelength is around 12.2 cm. It means that the distance between the walls can be 6.1 cm, 12.2 cm, 18.3 cm, and so on. Although the microwave oven is a truly remarkable achievement, the technology behind it has remained unchanged since 75 years ago. It seems that magnetrons will continue to serve in our kitchen for many more years to come. If you learned something and find this video useful, please like, share and subscribe to help this channel grow. And don't forget to click on the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you and see you in the next video.